everybody. Welcome to Ozark Live. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a really Thanks good mood today. Thanks for joining us. Okay, okay. I'm, I may be afraid to ask this because I never know what's going to happen, but what what's the latest in, in the saga of Frito? Any new things going on? Okay, all week long I've told you about the cat, right? You remember Frito, yeah, the kitty that yeah. was sort of the Ozarks Live house cat for a while, right? Mm -hmm. And then she got knocked up and had kittens and they all got adopted <laughs> out. Yep. And you have to watch her. Um, so she's a sneaky little thing and she learned how to open doors. Right. Right? So we had these sort of I don't know what you call them, kind of like a lever sort of it's door. It's more of a handle than a knob. Yeah, more a like a knob. handle than a knob. Exactly, yeah. thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so she learned how to open those and come in and out at will. So when we were gone for Thanksgiving, we came home and found again that she had broken into the house. <laughs> she was in the garage. She had broken into the house and helped herself to the bagels, okay? She <laughs> likes bread. We don't know why. She's kind of, she loves her carbs. We don't know why. A bagel she just eating cat. No. Well, she's, she Super had. put a little smear of cheese or The anything? fridge was not open. Oh, okay, But all right. I have found cornbread all over the kitchen before. <laughs> I found loaves of bread downstairs like twice. So my oh, daughter. Oh, that's right. She pack rats them down there. Yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll ah. open the other door and then she'll drive the bread downstairs into the second like living area and then she just goes to town you know yeah so anyway um, I tried to send a couple of pictures upstairs because I just got these do we have any okay well there's my daughter Audrey remember little Frito yes Frito you're I not sitting Audrey very lady like too. that's Frito she's a sweet little cat we yeah. rescued her out of the um, the woods next door she you can see she used to be a paratrooper yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> very talented little thing she is yes. okay so here she uh. is with what appears to be a sack of, of cornbread or muffins or something uh -huh. that she has taken downstairs into the carpeted area. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so long story short, when we got home from Thanksgiving, she had helped herself to the kitchen. She had not sharpened her claws on any of the furniture. Thank oh, well, that was lovely. Goodness. Yeah. And then yesterday, she got in through the laundry room. I threw her out back. And then the other cat, Zombie, got in through the laundry room. So they teach each they're, other. They're tag teaming. They're yeah. tag teaming. And so we have four new doorknobs. That's is, the whole point of my story. It took me that long. Four new doorknobs. Four new doorknobs. Are you now, able to operate them? I can operate them. Okay, good, good. To my knowledge, Frito Bandito has not figured out yet how to operate them. So Frito is giving you like really dirty looks when it passes by. She's not happy. Okay, Frito loves bread and bagels yeah. and cornbread and this. What does Zombie go after? Anything in particular? I think Zombie just chases after Frito and says, hey man, I was just here. <laughs> She's an accessory. She can't deny that. An accessory. But yeah, but after she, the fact. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, so that's the saga of the cats, and she's still a sweet kitty. Yeah, I know, I know, but she kind of she lets you live in that house <laughs> because have, obviously she could take you out anytime she wanted to. And it's just bread. Although one of our neighbors <laughs> did tell us once that they thought they caught her coming through the doggy door and that she ate the butter. So maybe well, she takes the bread to their house to get the butter because they're the kind of people who leave the butter sitting wow, out. She, she's going to learn how to work the toaster any day like now. I like that cat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. That could be ugly. It is time for our hot light delight. <laughs> <laughs> Krispy Kreme hopes your 2018 holiday season is as sweet as their new Christmas donut assortment. Look at them. Frito would approve, let me just I tell you so. right now. If these I had these in the house, approved. she'd figure that door, doorknob out in a heartbeat. Them. Look yeah. at these cute and tasty little gifts they brought for us today. The Santa belly is filled with chocolate cream. Super cute. The holiday plaid, two versions of the ugly sweater donut. Yeah. I love the ugly sweater donut and the little Santa hat. Super cute. Uh -huh. They're too cute to be ugly. Right. They're too delicious to be anything but awesome. They're Krispy Kremes. And yes. Krispy Kreme has also brought back a holiday drink favorite, peppermint mocha. And we're going to get to sample these on next week's Hot Light Delight. How come we're not getting to sample them today? I That was the first question that popped into my mind. I, <laughs> hey. I'm a little bummed. I'm so a little bummed. under the weather. A nice hot peppermint drink would have just fixed me right up. I'm not under the weather and it would have worked for me yeah, no too. No kidding, yeah. absolutely. All right, don't forget to gift yourself this holiday season. Download that Krispy Kreme Rewards app. You will not regret it. Yeah. And a reminder for that person who's always hard to buy for, a Krispy Kreme gift certificates, 
in any amount, as well as coffee, coffee cups, and other collectibles make Chris, you know, great Christmas gifts. Of course they do. And you can like Krispy Kreme on Facebook, follow them on Instagram, stop by the Springfield store to find out how to help a child spending the holidays in the hospital with Krispy Kreme's 12th annual Trooper Toy Drive, which is a very generous thing that they do. Another yes. thing you can feel good about. So yeah. enjoy yourself. Perfect. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm going to wait for the mint mocha to eat with those, I or to drink with to those. I need a cup of coffee to go with these. Yes. All right, we've got a great show for you this afternoon, we promise. Yes, Kim Lorenzen is back from McAdoodles. Yep, and Joy is chatting with the Missouri Restaurant Association. I am, but before we get to it, we're going to show you what is on the radar. All right, we shared the antics of Frito the cat. Frito learned how to open the doors. Had to change the doorknobs, right? Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Holiday time can be extra problematic for cat owners because cats like to climb things. <gasps> okay. Check out one cra what one crafty designer came up with to help. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the half parasol Christmas tree. Nope. It, tell me if I'm wrong. Is this just the right thing for people with cats because they may be a little bit less likely to try and climb that? Now. My no. cats could go straight up That's that tree. That's what I mean. The cat's going to go, oh, look, there's stuff up there. But they, I think they're a little more intrigued when there's there's ornaments on the bottom to bat around. Yes. So it's true. a little bit, this is this is a great idea. Families with little kids who might tug on the branches yes. and knock the thing over also might be able to use one of these. It might also be the thing for those of us who have a boatload of presents that spill out all over the living room yeah. because you wrap every little thing. You got I, all that room now. I like that idea, but you see there that picture that you saw. Oh, right yeah. there. Okay. There was a hearth which the cat will walk along, knock all the stuff off, and then just jump right into the tree there. I'm telling you, it's not going to work. <laughs> I think it's a great and idea. And you better not have a dog. <laughs> Yeah. That's where you could have problems. It's yeah. available for you in the UK for like 43 bucks if you are so inclined. I liked it. It's, I, it's an idea. Well, it keeps the kids from pulling the ornaments down, the little ones. That's true. Of course, they can climb too. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll just have to see what kind of feedback comes after the holidays, all right? All right. Now, keeping up with the holiday decoration scene, it's not unusual for people to hire someone to put up holiday lights, but there's a growing service industry for people who want the whole Christmas enchilada. The tree, the wreaths, the garland, put it up, take it down, and get it out of here. This is a photo from New York's Rent a Christmas, which is a full service decorator, according to an article in Vox. The Feels Like Home package gets you a six foot artificial decorated tree, lights, tree skirt, and a team of elves to set it up. But these elves can do so much more than that. Lux Christmas Rentals by Rent a Christmas. That's rentachristmas.com. All right, depending on the job, you can spend thousands. Some people pay tens of thousands to decorate large homes, offices, pretty much anything. You can get real trees too and decorations of your choice. But when you consider that it all will cost you about $177 for someone to come to your house and hang nine feet of garland, Joy, we're in the wrong business. We are in the wrong business. Have you yeah. checked the prices on those? Some of those trees, those six and a half foot yeah. plus trees are like $3,500. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, they'll come set it up for you, mm -hmm. and then they'll take it away. Mm -hmm. But Man, when you start doing the math on that, mm -hmm. these people are spending tens and tens and tens of thousands to have somebody come. How much is your time worth? Not that. I mean, yours at least. I mean, come on. Man, yeah, crazy. It's a it's a really nice industry for people who have yeah. it in them to do that. And you know, in New York City, the, the apartments are like little cracker boxes. They have nowhere to store this stuff. Yes. And people said we went out and bought a tree, and now we don't know where to put it. I mean, we have to just keep it up or smash it into somewhere because we have nowhere to keep, you know, you don't have anywhere to store anything in that city. Still, True. yeah, $177 for one garland. Here you go, collect. I'll come to your house and put that, put your garland up for $177. I'll just do garland, I'll be a specialist. You'll be a garland specialist. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm do okay. all the, the other stuff, just Crazy. the garland. All right, this made my day. Have you heard okay. about the little social experiment for the, uh, the footwear chain Payless Shoe Source pulled? Have you seen this? This kills me. Okay, Payless <laughs> took over a former Armani store in Santa Monica, California, renamed it Pelesi, and invited in a bunch of social media influencers 
it put out its own Payless shoes, but instead of 20 or 40 bucks, they priced them from 200 to $600. <laughs> the influencers paid it, yeah. photographed it. They sold about $3,000 worth of shoes within just a few hours. People were gushing over the quality, the designs. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yeah. Then Payless comes clean, refunded their money, captured the reaction, and posted the whole thing on YouTube. Okay, so the company apparently emerged from Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2017, wanted to challenge today's image-conscious fashion influence culture. And so here they are. They come clean and go, see those little sneakers? We'll give you back your $500. You can have them for $25. I really like that. Now. I really like that. I do, too, because I'm a big fan of Payless. Yeah. I am. Uh, but. I, I, I gotta be a little skeptical. You gotta wonder if maybe the whole thing was just a big stunt. I don't know. You? you I can't imagine oh, that that would be. Oh, ye of little faith. Days. But still, <laughs> I thought that the whole idea behind it was interesting. Because Folgers did it. Folgers did do it back in the day. Remember That's when they replaced right. the coffee at Cafe Du Monde or wherever? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And they said, this is for Folgers. Folgers, it's going to work for yeah the shoe store. All I right. thought it was hysterical. <laughs> Coming up, Jeremy has a brand new take on Christmas wreaths. He'll set up your wreath for you. Don't go away, Ozark's <laughs> Live is just getting started. <laughs>